Hello everyone! I've got a fun little project coming up that's going to require some indexing, so I've broken out my dividing head, and I figured this is a perfect opportunity to show how to set one of these up on the mill table. I've already made a video explaining how to figure out everything you need to do with the handle on this and how many holes you need to move in the hole plate. I'll rehash that a little bit here, but I'm going to go ahead and put a link up in the corner here to that video so you can see it in a bit more detail. In that video though, I don't really talk about setting one of these up on the mill table, so let's go ahead and talk about it now. I've got this laying on its side on some cardboard on the floor, and the reason is, is I haven't used this indexing head in several years, and I want to make sure that there aren't any chips or nicks or burrs or anything like that on the bottom. This is a good practice to do anytime you put anything on the table, whether it's a, a fixture or your vise, a rotary table, or a dividing head like this. Now I've already taken this small stone and I've gone over it a number of times just to make sure that I don't have any burrs that might interfere with or uh, cause a problem in the setup, especially rocking or scarring up the table. Uh, this indexing head also has a key here to help align it to the table, and I've gone ahead and stoned that down as well. That is especially susceptible to getting nicks on these corners when you're putting it onto the table. You will likewise want to make sure that the table is clean and burr free. I've also gone ahead and lowered the mill table as far down as it'll possibly go because that way I don't have to lift the dividing head as high. I'm not entirely sure how much it weighs, but it's somewhere in the 80 to 100 pound range, roughly 40 to 50 kilos. I'm certainly not getting any younger and I don't have any help in the shop, so I want to try to make this lift as easy as possible on myself. Whenever I have a lifting job like this, I always think of the wise words of Abraham Lincoln. Nobody wants a prolapsed anus. I'm guessing it was probably an early quote, maybe from his wrestling days. Sorry it doesn't have the gravitas of his later words, but you know, give me a break. It's not like I said it or something. I'll be okay. I'm just gonna walk off screen and tuck my colon back into my body. It's always a good idea to have the T-nuts roughly in place before you put this on there. Don't ask how I know. Most of the time, dividing heads really don't have a lot of clearance, so even the shortest set of studs in the clamp set is a little bit too tall. It sticks up another inch or 25 millimeters above this. So I'm using some all thread just to try to keep it as low profile as possible. And then I like to have the hardened washer in there as well as the flange nut. The last time I used this dividing head, I needed it angled so I could drill a couple of angled holes in the end of a piece. Now I don't need that now, I want the part to be nice and flat and parallel to the table. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that now. There are four large nuts on the back side here that allow you to pivot the entire head. And that's pretty common, of course, depending on what dividing head you've got, uh, the pivoting mechanism will be a little bit different, perhaps. But this seems to be a pretty common arrangement. Here they are, and as you can see, they are some pretty big boys. I've already loosened them off camera, so you can't see how much of a limp I am. But I'm just going to loosen these guys up completely so that this will pivot freely. I'll try to zoom in on this. There's actually a degree scale on this shiny bit there, and there's a witness mark right there. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up on camera though. Hopefully you can see the witness mark on camera, but it's on the screw head. Right now it's lined up with the 45 degree mark, and let me get these totally loose. Okay, there we go. It's always fun when things move suddenly. <laughs> And I'm just going to set this up at zero. Well, here's what I was talking about with that front nut that's underneath the, uh, the chuck. The chuck is actually hitting that nut right now, and I can't go any lower than that. 
So I'm going to have to actually switch out to a half 13 bolt, try to keep that as low as possible. Or maybe I could just take out that washer. We'll try that. That's uh, taken care of. Let's see if this will go down low enough now. I think taking out that washer probably gave me the extra degree I needed. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll just tighten up my nuts on the back. I need to make sure that my workpiece is as flat and parallel to the table as possible because I'm going to be cutting long flutes in this entire length. If it was angled one way or the other, then one end of that flute would be deeper on one side than the other end, and I just can't have that. To indicate this in, I've got a 2 inch indicator held directly in the collet of the chuck, and I'm going to sweep that back and forth, just like any other indicating job. I'm using a wide flat tip on my indicator. This way, I don't have to be perfectly centered over my stock to begin with, because the wide flat face will just sit on the high spot no matter where I am. I'm going to bring this down close and get a little ways into the travel here and then finish off by raising the knee just to zero it. There we are. And now I'll sweep back and forth. You can see that I'm actually about 40 thousandths of an inch over a millimeter lower on this end, meaning that if I were to touch off and start cutting over here, this end would be considerably deeper. I've loosened up the nuts on the back side of the dividing head again, and I've raised the chuck so that it's definitely too high. Not by much, maybe half a degree or so, but that gives me a lot of control because I can finesse downward with my dead blow hammer, whereas I can't really get underneath it and swing. Of course, since I've moved it, I've got to come back over here, re-zero, and sweep across again in order to see how far off I am. A fun fact, the first time I went and swept this back in, uh, it was smack dab right on the money. I was maybe two ten thousandths of an inch out, and I said, well, crap, that's no fun. Uh, you guys aren't going to actually get to see any adjusting. So I went ahead and knocked it out further, and now we can see I'm 21 thousandths out. And I'm just going to give it some love taps here. I'm not going to go all the way to zero because uh, this thing is actually pivoting way back here by where the nuts are. So I'm lowering both sides at the same time. I want to sneak up on this so I don't have to restart. Okay, so that really only moved it a little bit. Maybe I'll get a little closer to zero this time. I'm just raising the knee up in order to re-zero this. And that is pretty darn close. Uh, it's actually not quite as close as I got it by sheer dumb luck, uh, but still perfectly fine for what I'm going to be doing. We're well within half a thousandth. Uh, hopefully everything doesn't move as soon as I tighten up all these uh, nuts, so I'll do this pretty gently. And of course it's moving. We'll check it again after I tighten up the nuts and make any adjustments necessary. Okay, we moved by a couple of thou, but let's see if this end moved as well. If it's still nice and straight across the entire length, then I'm going to be happy with that. And it looks like we're still within a thou. Sweep back across and make sure. 
we're less than a thousandth out and for what this is going to be I think that's going to be totally fine and it's certainly way better than an entire millimeter. Now that I've got the top swept in ideally I would do the side as well but I've got that key on the bottom of the dividing head and I'm not going to be able to really adjust it at all it fits very snugly into the t-slot so I'm going to go ahead and leave it where it is the next thing is going to be uh, getting this set up so that I can get the proper number of divisions. For this part, I'm going to be putting 11 longitudinal flutes around the circumference of this bar. That means that I need to figure out what I need to do as far as complete turns of this handle and partial turns using the whole plate. The video that I have up on dividing heads explains how to do that math, but in this case it's going to be a fraction of 40 over 11. 40 is the gear ratio of the dividing head, and 11 is the number of flutes that I want to cut, the number of features. Now that reduces down to three complete turns of this handle, and then seven elevenths of a turn. At the top of my hole plate here, I have all of the numbers of holes in each of these circles stamped into it. And you can see this one right there has 22 holes. Hopefully you can anyway. So I'm going to need to use that circle because that's the only one that I can get elevenths of a turn out of. Choosing which circle you're in is pretty easy. On all dividing heads, you're going to have this pin and it's being held in place on this one anyway with this nut. So when I loosen this, I'll be able to move the pin in this slot. I'll bring this back up here and I'll make sure to line up the pin in the 22 slot. I'm just going to snug up the arm. I'm not going to go hog wild on that because I don't want to accidentally bend my pin. The last thing I have to set up are the sector arms which are these brass arms here and you can see there's a flathead screwdriver right there. Right now it's currently loose so I can move the sector arms apart. Uh, these are two separate arms that overlap and you can use these to keep track of where you are on your circle. I said earlier that I needed 7 elevenths of a turn, that's how the fraction ended up, um, but I'm in the 22 circle. So if I had a circle of 11 holes, I would just go 7 holes in that 11 hole circle. In this case, I'm in 22, so I would have to go 14 holes. When I count how many holes, I am not counting the hole that the pin is currently in. So I'm going to start at the next one clockwise to that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So that hole right there. I've moved my sector arm so that it's just past that fourteenth hole. And now I just need to tighten up this flathead screw which is conveniently located right through the slot there. Of course, you could also just move the handle out of the way and get plenty of access to it. Now the sector arms can move as a unit. So in use, you'll have the sector arms up against your pin. And in my case, I will move three complete turns. There's one, two, and three. And then I'll move up to that 14th hole. There we are. Then I move my sector arms and I take my next cut. The last thing I need to do for this setup is make sure that the stock is actually running true to the axis of rotation. And that's because this is a three jaw chuck and they never clamp in the same place twice. So I pretty much know that this is gonna be out in some way, shape or form. When I machined the back plate for this chuck, I made sure that the boss that intersects with the back of the chuck is a little bit looser than I would normally make it. And that way I can loosen up the bolts that hold the chuck on and bump it around a little bit. I'm going to dial this in exactly as I would a four jaw chuck. I've got it zeroed on this side and I'm going to need to crank around to the other side to see where it lays. Then I'll split the difference. Since this is a 40 to 1 dividing head, I just need to crank it 20 times to get exactly 180 degrees away. 
We can see that we're four thousandths of an inch out right now, and we're touching more on this side because the dial rotated clockwise. So all I need to do is loosen it up and tap the chuck down a little bit, and then we'll check again. I have all these snug, but I had to move the spindle in order to get to the uh, last bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and re-zero it here and double check it. Okay, so this direction actually looks decent-ish. We're about maybe seven or eight thousandths out. Touching a little bit too much up here. Let's see if tapping helps. Yeah, perfect. Nineteen, twenty. Ah, 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 twenty. All right, we're looking pretty good there. Now I'm just going to go 10, that should move me 90 degrees, and I'll see how far off we are there. Now you can see we are way off, hopefully you can anyway, I can't see the camera. Oh yeah, we're almost 11 thousandths out here. So let me see if I can tap that down, maybe six and a half. I'm going to move this clip, there we go. That seems to have done that. I'm going to re zero and see how we're doing. Uh, I'm going to go to the opposite side, so 20 cranks. Alright, so I went way too far apparently. Um, let me. Re zero up here. And crank back to the other side. I don't know that I'll be able to move this anymore. Yeah, that seems to be bolt down now. It looks like the best I can get just knocking the chuck around is within ten thousandths of an inch. That is not fantastic, but uh, it is what I have. So I've got a couple of options. I can try knocking the stock around. I don't think that's going to be too productive because it's not sticking out very far from the chuck. Um, the other option is just to kind of find where the midpoint is. In other words, maybe about five under where I am right now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So somewhere right around there. That's where I'll begin my cutting. And that way, the difference caused by the lack of concentricity is split between the two sides. That pretty much does it for the setup of the dividing head. I'm not actually going to show the machining of the part in this video because the indexing is actually a tiny little part of that. Before I sign off, I want to end this video on a safety note, and that has to do with my long luscious locks. For some reason, I just haven't gotten around to going to the barber shop in the last year. Who knows why? Anytime you've got longer hair or loose clothing around any kind of rotating equipment, make sure to secure it. Put your hair up in a ponytail, or the ever-fashionable man bun, or just tuck it up under a hat. You can even do combinations of them. Go Cubbies! I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below, and check out my Patreon page too. I'm going to throw a gag reel outtake video of this particular one up there because I have a lot of outtakes and a lot of curse words that I can't say on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.